Mars was the fourth planet located in the Sol system, named after the god of war in the pantheon of Earth's ancient Roman Empire. Mars was the site of the largest and most prominent Earth colony that later became an independent state. Many important individuals have their roots here. History. Early exploration. Viking 1, the first human probe to safely land on the surface of Mars, set down on Kreisplanitia on July 20, 1976 and was the first of several such missions, with varying levels of success, that progressed into the early 21st century. Ars 3, carrying an international crew of four, was Earth's very first manned interplanetary vessel and arrived on Mars on July 4, 2057. The Ars missions continued until 2072 when Ars 13's braking system failed during Mars entry, killing all seven crew members and bringing a halt to any further missions until early in the next century. Colonization Manned missions to Mars resumed in 2101 with the construction of a series of small scientific and military bases. By 2148, IPX had built eight experimental stations near Syria Planum and in 2155 the first permanent Mars colony, Mars 1, was built on Solis Planum, although the site itself was not considered a prime location. In 2156, Earth makes first contact with the Centauri Republic, precipitating a giant leap forward in propulsion technology when in 2161, the Earth Alliance negotiates access to jump gate technology, allowing the establishment of a colony on Proxima 3 in 2164 and on Thursday July 20, 2169 the first group of 768 colonists depart Earth for Mars in a ship piloted by John Carter. Thanks to the use of Centauri jump gate technology, the journey lasts mere hours and construction of Mars Dome 1, the new colonial capital, begins. However, tragedy struck on Saturday November 15, 2177 when a bomb planted by an Earth isolationist movement destroyed Dome 1, killing 487, including John Carter. Dome 1 was rebuilt and the Earth Alliance provided security for the citizens, making the colony a military governorship under Earth Force. In 2198, using technology provided by the Centauri, the terraforming of Mars begins. CFCs are pumped into the atmosphere to retain heat and the southern polar ice cap is melted, releasing water and CO2 into the rapidly thickening atmosphere. Carefully engineered microorganisms are bred and metabolized in the deep permafrost layers. Though the planet was still far from hospitable, by 2222, increased atmospheric pressure and average temperature meant that a human could survive outside a dome with only a thermoskin parka and a breather and not a full pressure suit as had been necessary in the early days. The colony itself consisted of three large cities, 230 experiment and mining stations, most of which were privately owned, and approximately 3,000 registered hinterland colonists and at least as many unregistered squatters, religious extremists, utopians, criminals, rugged individualists and cowboys and Indians wannabes. With the Mars colony's drive to encourage settlement in full swing, settlement permits were so cheap that often if a colonist didn't have one the government would simply look the other way. Though Earth Force was assigned to stop any unregistered transports and mining vessels trying to slip past customs inspections, bypassing taxes and tariffs, the number of ships assigned to the task was woefully inadequate to police the sheer volume of traffic. In reality only around a tenth of unauthorized traffic was detected, add to which a surface area greater than the combined landmasses of Earth and the result was an almost total lack of effective security. Even Psycor only had 40 trained Psycops assigned to the colony, not nearly enough to be effective in a population of that size. The state of affairs was perpetuated mostly because the Mars-born citizens liked the degree of freedom the poor EA security arrangements afforded them and because to improve them would cost significantly more credits than EarthGov was willing to spend on the problem. Put simply, colonial security stank and nobody cared. Secrets and rebellions. During the earth Minbury War, the colony openly declared its neutrality in the conflict, further deepening the bad blood between the Earthers and the Marses. While it was unlikely the Minbury were concerned with the declaration of neutrality, they nevertheless bypassed Mars in favor of an all-out assault on Earth, resulting in the Battle of the Line. After the war ended, supply shortages led to the so-called food riots, which were eventually put down by Earth Force. In 2253, IPX, still following up old rumors and false leads on artifacts that had supposedly been buried beneath the Martian soil for thousands of years, a team led by Dr. Mary Kirkish picked up something on IPX's sonic probes that was clearly not a natural formation some 300 feet beneath the surface of Syria Planum. The object was buried so deep it had been there at least a thousand years. Seeing as it was the middle of the Martian winter, it took weeks just to excavate half of it. Even that was enough to give Kirkish nightmares for the rest of her life. The ship, as the object later turned out to be, was the find of a lifetime. A week after sending word to Earth Central, Kirkish and her team were suddenly ordered to stop digging and pull back to their secondary base two miles away, threatening dismissal for any who tried to stay. 
For the next six days they sat waiting while unmarked shuttles flew in and out of the area surrounding the dig site before all activity suddenly ceased. Just then, Kirkish observed an identical vessel arriving overheard, which began firing on the site. At first Kirkish thought it was destroying its counterpart, but it soon became clear that it was finishing digging it out. After the new ship disappeared below the ridge, nothing happened for the next 20 or 25 minutes until they heard a mind-splitting scream, like the sound of something terrible being born, and she watched as both ships took off for deep space. After the incident, Kirkish and her colleagues were warned there would be unfortunate consequences if they told anyone what they had seen, breaking them up and assigning them to other worlds so they wouldn't have a chance to talk to each other. 2258 saw a wide-scale rebellion on the colony against Earth Alliance rule and their puppet, Provisional Government. The president was initially reluctant to use force to resolve the situation, but eventually caved to intense political pressure and deployed elite shock troops to put down the insurgency. The conflict was not limited to the surface domes, as several ships were engaged in Mars orbit including one piloted by the notorious free Mars terrorist Abel Horn, who was shot down over Phobos by the EAS Pornal during the battle. On April 14, 2260 Mars officially declared independence from the Alliance in protest over the bombings of civilian targets because of the provisional government's refusal to accede to President Clark's martial law decree. Though Proxima 3, Orion 7, and Babylon 5 also declared their independence in protest and solidarity over the Mars bombings, an Earth Force embargo and blockade meant that for now, Mars was on its own. Over the next 18 months the resistance continued to fight a guerrilla war against Earth Force, though they were quickly forced to occupy old supply and mining tunnels to hide from Earth troops and guard against a frontal assault. In mid-May of 2261, senior members of the Babylon 5 command staff made it through the embargo and pledged Captain Sheridan's support and a promise that they would move against Earth at the appropriate time. However, as a show of support for number one, Dr. Franklin stipulated that the bombing of civilian targets had to stop. On November 1st, the resistance launched simultaneous attacks on five Earth Alliance military bases on Mars, while Sheridan's fleet engaged the 35 Omega-class destroyers under the command of General Robert Leftcourt that had gathered in Mars orbit. Most of his fleet was disabled by shadow-modified telepaths that had been smuggled aboard by Earth Force sympathizers on Mars. With the Loyalist fleet disabled, the Liberation fleet left Mars for Earth space. After the conclusion of the war, the colony was granted independence from Earth, as a condition for the Earth Alliance's membership in the new Interstellar Alliance. Though no longer a colony world, Mars remained part of the Earth Alliance, though now as an equal member. Independence On Sunday June 15, 2267, six months after the Drac attack on Earth, a conference of the Earth Alliance Health Organization, overseen by Earth Force Captain Elizabeth Lockley, was held on Mars to bring together experts from unaffected Earth colonies to plan a unified plan of research. The conference was the idea of Dr. Franklin, then head of Xenobiological Research at Earth Dome. The keynote speaker was Dr. Sarah Chambers of the Excalibur. By this time, the population of Mars had grown to around 2 million individuals, 10% of which consisted of non-humans.